There was almost no competitors. You can, I mean, literally when I started Staple in 1997, there was probably like 20 brands in the same field, you know? Um, so obviously now there's over 20,000 brands. I don't know, you know, there's so many. <laughs> yeah. um, yes. So, and what, and and frankly, what is a brand? You know, like a, like a kid with an Instagram account that has 100,000 followers and a blue check and a t-shirt is a brand nowadays. <laughs> The pigeon dunks came out in the mid two thousands, um, and and I think it's still probably one of the most, uh, at least for me, one of the most iconic collabs of all time because it was so unusual and so different and so unlike anything that you know anyone was doing at at the time. Um, and my question to you is, you know, what do you think? has changed in the way people build brands if anything since then and how does it influence the the work that you're doing today uh, i think at the core if done correctly is still the same you know i think a brand should be um a unique individualized perspective or opinion from its creator uh and the creator should uh, and and I caveat this by saying I'm pretty old school, but I think the creators should take a lot of craft and care in what they put out into the world. Mm. And I think all creators should realize that they hold like a power in their hands and with that power comes responsibility. So whenever a creative puts something out into the world, whether it's a painting or a song or a sculpture or a photo, they have to realize that like they're metaphorically on a stage in front of a mic speaking to thousands of people. So imagine you're standing in front mm. of a room of like 99 people, right? What are you going to say to them? Like, it's important what you say. And so I still feel like that is at the baseline still the same as it ever was, whether you're talking about like, you know, Christian Dior or Ralph Lauren or Tommy Hilfiger or Jeff Staple or Virgil Abloh, like that is the consistent thread. I think the difference from the early 2000s when the Pigeon Dunk came out till now is the biggest differences are two. It's quantity and speed, right? So mm -hmm. when I started, there was no there was no street culture. Like it mm -hmm. wasn't even a, a definition yet. You know, they you had urban hip hop, you had punk rock, you had skate, you had surf as like these sort of cultures islands. that were floating around yeah islands but yeah. nobody was like going around the islands yet you know um and actually i want to add you know sports athletics and sneakers was also an island mm. but at in the in this era the sneaker island was just a sporting good thing it wasn't yet like this cross-cultural phenomenon that we see today there was almost no competitors you can, I mean, literally when I started Staple in 1997, there was probably like 20 brands in the same field, you know? Um, so obviously now there's over 20,000 brands. I don't know, you know, there's so many. <laughs> yeah. um, yes. So, and what, and and frankly, what is a brand? You know, like a, like a kid with an Instagram account that has 100,000 followers and a blue check and a t-shirt is a brand nowadays, you know? Yeah. But it's not like a clothing brand, but it is a brand. So, so quantity and then speed, right? Like the, the amount of information that we're getting and the speed of it is so much more faster and instantaneous now. So those two things added together have put the culture on this sort of like light speed rocket trajectory. Um, but with that being said, if there are 20,000 brands out there today, how many of those brands will be in existence five, 10, 15, 20 years from now? I still think it's the same number as 50 years ago. Yes. Because of because of the lack of that foundational spirit that I think existed back in the day. How do you see the role with the brand and the audience sort of playing out in a, a new way? Or do you think it's always the same thing, you're just happening at a faster pace? I truly believe that at the base of it, we're still the same. And the reason why I say that is because when we did NFT NYC and we held a, a whole bunch of meet and greets and talks and everything, and we actually met the community in person, even though we were on Discord with each other 24 seven, when we met in person, it was different. It was mm. dope. Like 
And the energy, I still believe like the cellular energy transfer of human beings together cannot be replaced on a discord feed, you know? And so if you treat people still as human beings at the end of the day that you want to shake hands with and break bread with and have a meal with, like that is at the core of it. The speed and the quantity of which you put stuff out is much faster. But I'm always about like, what are we doing for these people? And what are we doing for them if and when the day that I get to meet them and shake their hand that I can look them in the face and say like, I did best by you. I looked mm. out for what you wanted. That's really like my number one goal because I, I will meet these people. You know, there's all this technology and speed and like advancements and cool shit that we can do. I get it. But at the end of the day, can you shake that person's hand and look them in the eye and be like, did I do good by you? And did you support? Like, thank you. Like, that's really it. That's that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day, you know? I met Ferocious. I interviewed him. Uh, and, like, he was homeless at one point. He, like, ran away from his family in Las Vegas. Like, you know, he was not understood by anybody. And now he's this globally renowned artist that is championing, like, lgbtq queer community at the same time like you know he's fucking amazing so um yeah you you can't denounce that